Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. This is Frank Knight speaking for the world's most honored watch, Longines. When the West was being won, Longines was there. Old records show sales of Longines watches in the silver mining towns of Colorado and Nevada, the gold mining areas of California. A fine gold watch, preferably a Longines, was one of the first luxuries purchased by a lucky prospector. For then, as now, the name Longines identified the world's most honored watch. Longines watches won their first World's Fair Grand Prize in 1878, won grand prizes in Paris, Brussels, Philadelphia, and at many other places. Right now, Longines watches are winning comparable successes in the accuracy competitions in European national observatories. Today, you needn't make a gold strike to own a Longines. Many beautiful models for ladies and gentlemen are priced as low as $75. Visit your authorized Longines Whitnor jeweler. He will be honored to serve you. All right, cut the cards. Up, young fella, get your money on a table. Uh, look, Mister, uh, you're holding up that game. You want cards, or don't you? Yes, I want them. Well, let's see your money. Well, there. Hey, what's that thing? It's a solid gold fob. Yeah, it don't look like much to me. What do you think, Joe? Let me see it. Hmm. I don't know what's told. Don't seem like a young drifter like him would have no gold. It's gold, all right. Why don't you ask somebody who knows? This ain't no assay office. Go on, kid. You get some money, we'll deal you a hand. Now, wait a minute. Ask her. Kitty? Well, she'd know. Ask her. I guess she'd know about gold, all right. Hey, Kitty, come here a minute, will you? Sure, so. What's on your mind? Hey, look at this thing, will you, Kitty? Hmm. The watch fob. Yeah, but uh, is it gold? Feels like gold to me. Who says it isn't? What'd I tell you? Shut up. The kid wants to use it for a poker stick, Kitty. Just wanted to be sure it was worth something. Well, it's probably worth too much to be lost in a poker game. There, I told you. Come on, Stoll. Deal up the card. Yeah, I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm beginning to feel lucky all at once. Mr. Dillon! What? Mr. Dillon! Uh, yeah, Chester. I declare I sure am glad I found you, Mr. Dillon. Oh, what's the trouble? Oh, uh, well, sir, I just think you better get on back to the office right away. You sound mighty excited. Somebody start an Indian uprising or something? Well, no, sir, it ain't nothing like that. A prisoner escape? No, it ain't that neither. Well, you are going to tell me what it is. Uh, yes, sir. Hey, it's that lady. What lady? Well, that lady sitting there waiting for you in the office. Well, who is she, Chester? She wouldn't tell me, Mr. Jones. She wouldn't tell me nothing. She's just sitting there fanning herself straight as a ramrod, claiming she wants to see the marshal and where is he at, and why ain't he tend to his office. And uh, all right, Chester. And I'll, I'll see to it. How are we going to handle her? I'll handle it, Chester. Well, yes, sir, I know, but how? Well, the first thing is, you're going to go for the mail. For the... 
Again? That's right. I already got it, Mr. Dillon. I brung it early this morning. Don't you remember that? Well, you never know, Chester. They might have forgot to give you some of it. They ain't... Go Why, on. they ain't been but two circles just... Go like... on, Chester. No. Yes, sir. I'll be back directly. <laughs> Ah, good morning, ma'am. Yes, sir. Are you the marshal? Ah, yes, ma'am. Matt Dillon, what can I do for you? Well, for one thing, young man, you can be here when you're needed. I do not think this is the proper way to run a United States Marshal's office, even in this forsaken country. Well, even United States Marshals have to eat sometimes, ma'am. Perhaps so. Yes, now, do you know who I am? No, ma'am, I don't. Is there any reason why I should? Most people do. I am Mrs. Junius Chamberlain. My husband was the late Senator Chamberlain. Well, I'm glad to meet you, Miss Chamberlain. I require your assistance. Oh, how's that? I have come to Dodge City in search of my grandson. I want you to find him. Well, maybe you better tell me a little more about it, Miss Chamberlain. Has he done anything? Done anything? What do you mean, has he done anything? I mean, is he wanted? Why, of course he's wanted. That's what I'm telling you. I want him to come home and forget this nonsense about the West. He is wanted back at Yale College, where he belongs. Well, I guess we're talking about different things, ma'am. What I want to know is, has he broken the law? Certainly not. Chamberlains don't break the law, Marshal Dillon. And Junius is a Chamberlain. Junius Chamberlain the third. Uh, well, uh, I don't think you need a U.S. Marshal, ma'am. What do you mean? Well, if your grandson hasn't broken the law... You often find people, do you not? Uh, yes, ma'am, I you do. You have but... men and horses at your disposal. You have the authority to organize a search party. Oh, I have the authority, Well, right. I want you to use it. I want you to organize a search at once. <sighs> Miss Chamberlain... I, I want you to find my grandson. I see no need to say more. Well, there's a need for me to say more. I can't organize the kind of a search that you're talking about. Why? Why not? You are the marshal, are you not? I'm the marshal, all right, ma'am, and you may find it hard to believe, but my job has a lot more to it than riding off after a boy wanted by Yale College. Why, how dare you? Now, the marshal's office can't close down to look for ever stray, Miss Chamberlain. I have great influence in Washington. Well, it's too bad, ma'am, that you don't have more influence with your grandson. You r refuse to help me, then? Well, I'll keep an eye out for him, and I'll let you know if I hear anything about him, but that's about the best I can do. I believe I have a right to expect more, Marshal Dillon. I'm sorry, Miss Chamberlain. I, I wouldn't worry too much. He'll probably turn up and dodge one of these days, and I'll see if I can't send him home to you. That won't be necessary, Marshal. I intend to stay here until I find him. And I'll take him home myself. Sociable, up-to-date, debonair. What's this, a new word game? No, I'm just mentioning the qualities that people admire in other people. Oh, I see. If you're sociable, up-to-date, and uh, what was that other word? Debonair? Yes, debonair. But listen to it this way. Be sociable, look smart, keep up-to-date. With Pepsi, drink light, refreshing Pepsi. Stay young and fair and debonair. Be sociable, have a Pepsi. Notice how many of your friends are serving Pepsi-Cola these days. It's the up-to-date refreshment. Be sociable, serve Pepsi. We ordered a steak for you. Oh, thanks. Mm, you better not yeah. think it's none but good to you, Mr. Jones. They sure have been offering some terrible stringy steak around this place. Oh, 
I don't think you'll be too particular about the food, Chester. Just so he gets a chance to eat in peace. <laughs> From what I hear, he's lucky to sneak in here without being caught by that woman who's causing him so much trouble. <laughs> you two think it's all pretty funny, don't you? Well, no, Matt, there's two ways of looking at it. Uh-huh. You take Mrs. Chamberlain now. I've never met her, but I hear she's a strong, good woman doing what she thinks is right. <laughs> all over town. <laughs> well, you'll have to admit, Matt, the picture of an old lady going around like a Pinkerton man's pretty funny. Yeah, well, I'll feel more like laughing after she moves on out of Dodge. I'll bet you will. Some of the men down at the Long Branch say she's not being too complimentary to you. Kind of talks as though she's doing your job for you, looking for that boy. Yeah, well... Uh, Mr. Dillon, there's one thing about this all that I just don't understand. But you are laughing, though, aren't you, Chester? Well, yes, sir, I was laughing, all right, but... But what? Well, it's just that I never heard of this place that fella escaped from. What place? What are you talking about? Why, that that Yale, uh, the place that lady says he broke loose from? Uh, what is that place, Mr. Doan? Some kind of a stockade or something like that? <laughs> well, it would seem like a stockade to you, Chester. Now, would you go ahead and eat and let Miss Chamberlain do the worrying about Yale? Turn wheeler. A man just ain't safe nowhere no more. Barkeep? Oh, Barkeep? Uh, yes, ma'am. Do you own this establishment? Well, uh, not exactly, ma'am. Uh, that is, I... Then uh, I wonder if you'd be good enough to summon the proprietor. Well, you see, ma'am... Uh, is he not here? Well, I tell you... Never this... mind, Sam. I'll take care of him. All right, Miss Kitty. My name's Kitty Russell. What can I do for you? I was asking for the proprietor. I wasn't expecting you. Well, I wasn't exactly expecting you either, but I'm the proprietor. Oh, isn't that odd? Not especially. Uh, you're very direct, aren't you? I have to be. Yes, well, I like directness. I'll come to the point. I am Mrs. Junior Chamberlain. I've heard of you, Mrs. Chamberlain. Yes. Uh, Miss Russell... I am looking for my grandson. I heard about that, too. I can get no official help from your marshal, so I've had to undertake the task myself. The marshal says his office cannot cope with problems of this nature. Now, Miss Russell, I would appreciate it if you would take this description of my grandson. His name is Junius Chamberlain III. That much I know. I would appreciate it very much. If you would keep your eyes open, Miss Russell, I'd like you to let me know if the boy comes into your establishment. Well, eyes open or not, Mrs. Chamberlain, I very well might not see him. You'd see him. Junius is a gentleman. I'll be staying at the Dodge House. Uh, Good day, Miss Russell. Good day. You want some more coffee, Kitty? Yeah, thanks. Well, go on. What did she say then? Well, nothing. She just swept out, proud as you please, as though she'd been in the governor's mansion instead of a saloon. I tell you, Matt, she had me kind of flabbergasted. Yeah, well, you've got a lot of company. Matt, I'm not sure, of course, but I think I did see her grandson. Oh? When was this? About a week ago. What, did he tell you his name? No, no, he didn't, Matt, and that's why I didn't say anything to the woman about it. Anyway, I don't know where the boy is now. Well, what makes you think it was young Chamberlain? You remember me telling you about Lou Stoll calling me over to a poker game to tell him whether a watch fob was pure gold or not? Yeah, you told him you thought it was. Well, since I saw Mrs. Chamberlain, I haven't been able to get that watch fob out of my mind. Well, why is that? 
It had a design on it, Matt. A family crest or something like that. And Mrs. Chamberlain was wearing a pin with the same design on it. I could swear to it. Well, I'm glad you didn't. Huh? Why? Miss Chamberlain would probably have had the cavalry out looking for the boy by now. Oh, Matt, the boy means a great deal to his grandmother. I don't think you should joke about it. I'm not joking, Kitty. I don't see anything funny about the whole thing. Got into Mr. Botkin. I don't know, but he seems mighty upset about something. Yeah, maybe his bank got robbed or something. Marshal, you've got to come quick. What is it, Mr. Botkin? What's wrong? I just got robbed is what's wrong. What? Well, one Everybody. of the men got hit. He's lying there in the street. Come on, Chester. Who shot him? I did. I had to shoot him. There were two of them. They were holding up the bank. Oh, where's the other one? He got away. Rode right out of town. All right, uh, will you stand aside, please? Please, will you stand aside? Let me in, please. Will you let me in there? Uh, looks like he's hurt bad, you know. Yeah. That's what happened now. Like I say, there were two of them. Came into the bank. Guns drawn, demanded the money. I, I shot at them. I, I don't think I hit the other one. Well, you sure didn't miss this one. I mean... He's dead? No, not yet. You know who he is? No, Marshal. I never saw him before. You recognize him, Chester? No, sir, I don't. There's one peculiar thing, though, Mr. Dillon. Oh, what's that? Now, look at there. Hanging from his gun belt. Huh? Oh, yeah. I've never seen no gunman wearing a watch bob there before, have you? He may not be an ordinary gunman, Chester. Now, come on. Let's get him up to dock. been some mighty interesting developments in recent chapters of CBS Radio's Ma Perkins, but this is not news to her fans. The story of Rushville Center's favorite citizen, her relatives and friends, has captured the attention of listeners across the nation for many years. For millions of listeners, each Monday through Friday, the daytime hours bring no less than seven absorbing true-to-life dramas, including the story of Ma Perkins on CBS Radio. Besides Ma, you can enjoy such longtime favorites as The Romance of Helen Trent, Young Dr. Malone, The Right to Happiness, The Couple Next Door, Whispering Streets, and The Second Mrs. Burton. There are good habits and bad, but one that recommends itself highly is that of listening while you work. Listening to this winning seven combination for daytime drama each Monday through Friday. Work won't evaporate like magic but it will go along at a higher momentum when keeping company with CBS Radio's winning seven combination of entertaining serial dramas. Exclusively yours on this station in your area. The Doc reckon he'll make it, Mr. Dillon? No, he doesn't think so. Well, are you going to try talking to him? Yeah, I guess I'd better. Who... Hmm. Maybe we ought to wait till Doc gets back. Well, he probably should, but I don't know how long he's going to be conscious. Chamberlain? Mm. Chamberlain, can you hear me? What? I'm Marshal Dillon. I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. What? What did you call me? Chamberlain. Isn't that your name? I ain't got nothing to do with that name, Marshal. There's no need to hide anything now. I may be dying, but I ain't afeard. Anybody by the name of Chamberlain, he, he's afeard. He's yellow-livered. How did you get this watch, Bob? I wanted it off me. I wanted it. Fair, Marshal. And I wore it for luck. <laughs> he run off and let me get shot. <laughs> Some luck. You mean Chamberlain was with you in the bank? Yeah, he was with me. 
He wouldn't stand and fight. He ran. He... <coughs> Just tell me one thing. Where did Chamberlain go? The old boom place. That's where we hid out. <coughs> you get him, Marshal. Get him from me. Yeah. I'll be getting him for a lot of people. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, Chester. Don't you think it's an awful mean day to go out hunting a man? They're all mean, Chester. Well, I know that, but if it was nice and cool and pretty... If it was nice and cool and pretty, you wouldn't want to be working at all. Now, will you quit complaining? Well, I ain't complaining. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I'm not in any frame of mind to listen to you. Hey, Mr. Dillon, ain't it kind of funny that nobody ain't found out who that dead gunman is yet? Well, he was much more interested in telling me who he wasn't than who he was. No wonder why. He didn't want to be mistaken for a chamberlain. Now, there's the Boone place. Mm. Come on. And we'll ride right up to the house, Chester. You cover me as I go in. I don't think there's going to be any trouble. All right, sir. All right, you stay with the horses. Chamberlain, it's Matt Dillon. Come on out. Come on out. They're all coming after you right now. Don't you, Marshal, don't you. All right, come on out then. All the way out. I, uh... I don't know what you want me for, Marshal. Where's your gun? I don't wear a gun, Marshal. You were wearing one on the bank this morning. But I didn't use it, Marshal. I, I didn't use it. I didn't steal anything. I didn't hurt anybody. I just rode right out of town. Well, now you can ride right back in again. But you haven't any right to do this to me, Marshal. I didn't do anything. That's just what your partner said. Now, come on, Chamberlain. Get on your horse. <laughs> Take him in, Chester. All right, sir. Uh, will I put up the horses now? No, not yet. I want you to go over to the Dodge house for me and get Miss Chamberlain. My grandmother? Here in Dodge? You want me to bring her over to the jail? That's what I said, Chester. Right to the jail. All right. Come on, Chamberlain. My grandmother's a determined woman. She has a lot of influence in Washington. All right, get in there. My grandmother has great family pride, Marshal. She won't take kindly to my being in jail. I'm kind of ashamed to have you here myself. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, Chester. Right up, Mr. Dillon. She's halfway across the street. Where is my grandson? He's in the cell here, Miss Chamberlain. I want to talk to him. All right, ma'am. I told him you wouldn't let me stay in jail. Well, Junius, I must say I would rather have found you in different surroundings. I know. It's the way they do things out here. Back home, they would never have locked up a Chamberlain. I hope not, Junius. Well, go ahead, Grandmother. Tell him about us. I want to know some things about you, Junius. We can talk later. Get him to let me out first. Is it true, Junius, that you participated in the hold-up of the bank this morning? 
I didn't do anything, Grandmother. I swear it. Were you there? Well, yes, I was there, but I didn't do anything. I didn't take anything. I didn't shoot anybody. But you threatened to. It was just a prank. Nothing more than a prank. And when there was trouble, you turned and ran. Why, of course I ran. I didn't want to get involved. And you left your your partner in crime to bleed and die alone. But I was thinking of the family. I was thinking of the Chamberlain name. The Chamberlain name has never been worn by cowards, Junius. But, Grandmother... Right or wrong, we don't run. Marshal Dillon? Yes, ma'am. Could your man help me back to the hotel? I'm a little tired. I'll go with you, Miss Chamberlain. You, you can't leave me here. You've got to help me. I can't help you, Junius. I pray it's not too late for you to help yourself. Marshal Dillon? Uh, right away, ma'am. Here, take my arm. Marshal, will... Will they be severe with him? Well, he'll have a sentence to serve, ma'am. But as he said, he didn't really hurt anybody. Except you. palsy isn't inherited, it isn't contagious. What makes this cruel handicap unlike anything else is that no two cases of palsy are ever alike. For the most part, a tiny injury to the brain causes it, and as we know, the brain is unbelievably complex. There's every reason to believe that a cure for cerebral palsy will be found, but it will take time. Time spent in research. You can shorten this time by contributing your support to a concentrated medical research program. Somewhere in America, cerebral palsy strikes some child every 53 minutes every day in the year. It can happen in any family to anyone. United Cerebral Palsy is fighting this relentless 53-minute timetable, but this fight needs your help. Won't you join the 53-minute march on cerebral palsy? Mail your contribution today. Address it to Palsy, care of your local postmaster. That's Palsy, care of your local postmaster. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Jeanette Nolan, Sam Edwards, Joseph Kearns, Vic Perrin, and Jess Kirkpatrick. Harley Bear is Chester, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week for another story on Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke.